Hi, welcome to ITV Asia. My name is Claire Chen, I'm CEO of Boeing Group Consulting, and uh, I'm your host of Luxury Marketing in China. Today we have an uh, honor to invite uh, our guest, uh, the Managing Director of 3 Anaban, Mr. Adam Hepburn, to be here as, to share us uh, their luxury, his luxury experience in China. Hi, Adam. Hi, Claire. Nice to be here. Thank you for coming. Uh, first, would you like to uh, introduce about yourself to our audience and uh, also what's your China experience? Sure, of course. Um, I guess I'm on the wrong side of 40. Uh, I've been in Asia for about 20 years now. Well, um, Eight of those years in Shanghai, although it really doesn't seem like eight years. <laughs> uh, a year is a very short time in Shanghai. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hopefully staying here for a long time to come. Yeah, um, so we like to uh, like talk about your background. So I know you have many years in F&B industry background. Yeah, I, I started life uh, as, as a, a student uh, engineer and, and realized that I didn't want to become an engineer. <laughs> um, and like, like most students in the West, you, you, you struggle to put yourself through university. So I had been working for hotels, restaurants, etc., making a few, uh, few dollars to keep me going in the university. And I realized that I was more interested in working with people than with working with I machines see. and pipes and you know, all that sort of stuff. So I ended up uh, moving to London and working in the hotel industry. So I, I was a hotelier uh, from sort of junior waiter to general manager uh, over a period of 20 years. Um, I started in London and, and moved to Asia, uh, firstly in Hong Kong, and worked with some of the best hotels in the world. I've been very lucky and work with some of the best people in the world also. So I guess I've really sort of come through the, 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 the real sort of traditional hospitality route from the shop floor through all the different departments to ultimately one day uh, you know, being the, the general manager of a very nice hotel in Asia. And uh, it, it, was a, it was a great journey uh, and had this wonderful opportunity to be in an industry where you meet so many interesting people, uh, so many exciting different people and, and in such wonderful locations. Uh, so I certainly never got bored and really had no uh, plan to leave the hotel business. But here I was in Shanghai about eight years ago and completely out of the blue, uh, an opportunity came to work with uh, a very visionary owner who saw the potential in the high-end luxury market in Shanghai and China. And we really had an opportunity to create uh, something which hadn't been done before, to take luxury lifestyle and not only to own it and develop it, but also to operate it. So what we've been doing um, for the last four years is really creating a brand. And under that brand, we, we operate food and beverage, uh, art and culture, spas and wellness, and events. And uh, we're continuing to look at new opportunities to expand that. So in a lot of ways, what I did before in hospitality and hotels, it was about service, and it was about creating a service culture. A lot of that's the same in what we do. Yeah. Um, we just don't sell rooms. We sell a lifestyle experience. Yeah. Um, you just talk about a lifestyle experience. And um, what was the initiative? Because uh, I know Sri Anaban is uh, like the first lifestyle concept uh, so to, to launch uh, um, in Shanghai. Um, so you, the lifestyle experience, where you are uh, focused on in, like what Chinese people you think that is going to uh, going to experience, the lifestyle experience that you want to provide? Yeah, I mean, I think before we opened, I had two uh, major objectives. Uh, one, that it, it, looking back at the, the history of the Bund, I mean, the Bund was built by foreigners, for foreigners, and it was very important to us that we were in modern China. This was a, an experience which was designed for people from China. The experience is not particularly Chinese, it's, it's essentially uh, international concepts, mm -hmm. but our customers, the majority of our customers are Chinese. So we wanted to make sure that was very clear mm -hmm. from the start. And we also wanted to make sure that this very uh, imposing, uh, beautiful building that we had been given was brought back to life. I mean, in, in the way that we've all read about the, the wonderful times in the 20s and 30s when Shanghai was probably one of the greatest cities in the world and certainly the busiest. Um, we wanted to bring that life and soul back into this wonderful building. So we, our, our challenge was to create something that was exclusive, but not be excluding to either local people or visitors or whoever was, uh, was in town. So we needed to get that balance. And so 
you know, today, uh, on average, uh, about 65% of our customers are Chinese. 35% uh, are miscellaneous visitors. We have a lot of international people who are either living in Shanghai or, as you know, visiting. And so we've got, I think, the right balance from a customer mix. And business is good, so I think we've also got past the, uh, the imposing uh, facade that we have on that building. And we have enough interest on the inside to bring people in mm -hmm. and to try uh, perhaps and access something new, something different. And, and one of the one of the things we always try to be, whatever we do, is, is to be thought-provoking. It might not be for everyone, but we hope we make you think a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Fina Bank has been uh, open um, four years ago. Uh, I remember that was kind of my first year in China. Uh, what? What other secrets of success? Because, well, I'm also one of your member. <laughs> so, uh, if you kind of tell me something. <laughs> I mean, yes, sir, uh, uh, what do you think the key, uh, key factor of uh, success? Well, what I personally love about this city is it, it's, although it has a very interesting and exotic and, and much uh, talked about past, I think most people in Shanghai are not looking in the rear view mirror. Most people are looking forward, they're looking ahead. And I think people here, whether they're from Shanghai or they're living in Shanghai or even visiting, I think we all have a sense that this will be one of the most important cities in the world again. And I think we're, we're all looking forward. So really what Three on the Bun represents, uh, in a small way, is, is a slice of the future. And we, when we, we started with this idea, the intention was not to adapt concepts for China, the intention was to create something that would be, if you broke it off and dropped it into London or New York or Sydney, it would also be commercially successful. Mm -hmm. So the quality and the, the, the experience there would be appreciated in, in more developed markets. So we've created something that we feel um, is about the future. And as, as you know, I mean, you've lived here now for a few years, people are very curious in China. So the, the advantage you have if you can deliver quality, at least they'll come and look for the first time. And if they like what they see, well then, yes, you have a customer who will come back and perhaps become one of our members or, or whatever. And I think that's the, the opportunity that people have in a city like Shanghai, is there's an open-mindedness to, to business and, and, and to many things. So our, our position from day one was not to sort of adapt the service experience, the quality, but to make sure that it was clearly marketed and positioned to the local market and hopefully deliver an experience which they like, which I think, you know, the fact that our business is growing year on year says that we're perhaps being reasonably successful there. Okay. Um, another question is like, um, after three on the bond, there are a couple of, uh, these are, there are many of actually, the this luxury store and um, countish, you know, shop or restaurant opened uh, one by one. Um, what's your competitive uh, advantage and to be unique uh, positioning are not like others? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great question, and uh, it's one that comes up in, in all sectors. Uh, I, I mean, as, as you know, things can be copied quite easily in, in this part of the world, and I think one thing which is impossible to copy are, are soft skills. You, you can copy hardware yes. very well, mm -hmm. but in terms of people and in terms of the, uh, the whole culture, the service culture that uh, an organization can create, I think those uh, things are, are very difficult to copy. So really, I, I think what separates any market leader from the pack is, is really the total experience. And, and a part of that is very much the people and how they uh, interact with customers and the relationships they build up and how customers feel as a result of that experience. And, and we hope uh, when you leave Three on the Bun, you leave with a happy memory. And, and frankly, when I'm inducting new employees. Uh, that's one of the uh, metaphors I'll, I'll, I'll use, that we're in the business of creating happy memories. And, and that's really what, because people have choice, and you, you, you mentioned it rightly, there's a city that's growing as fast as Shanghai. There's many options. Mm -hmm. So if you don't create a compelling experience that people want to come back, then you, you, you ultimately won't succeed in a commercial way. I'm very sure that people is the most important asset. Uh, the last question is be personal, but not a personal. <laughs> what would be your definition of luxury? Well, I think um, you know luxury changes according to where you are and at what time. Um, I think the market that we're in right now, it's still early days for luxury. And I think the fact that people have a very large amount of disposable income 
allows them to buy expensive products and pay for expensive experiences. I think still today we're at that early stage in the luxury curve where people are buying brand names, they're buying the security and the safety of those brand names. But I sense now that we're moving a little bit past the beginning. I think we're either at the end of the beginning or the beginning of the end, or whichever. And we're moving into that stage now where people have taste and choice and they can distinguish between quality that suits them personally. And I think you will see the, the variety of whether it be retail or, or, or food and beverage or different luxury areas, the variety will start to grow as the, the, the client base becomes more discerning. And so to me, that we're moving into that phase of luxury right now. But I, I think on top of all of that, probably the one thing that's more uh, precious than anything else right now in a city like Shanghai is just the time, the time to see and to access this, old, this amazing choice that you have. So we're, we're constantly being bombarded with new ideas, new openings, and everything's new in Shanghai. Just having the time to get around them and actually find out which one suits you. That's a luxury to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, great. Um, thank you for coming to our program. And I'll uh, share with your experience as a luxury in China. Um, thank you for watching ITV Asia. Uh, this is Luxury Marketing in China. My name is Kaya Chen. And we'll see you next time very soon. Thank you.